Hello, this is Michael with Entertain Me TV Show Reviews, and this is the Audible review of Gold Rush Season 3, Episode 10, Those Wars. At Quartz Creek, Todd Hoffman are finally ready to start processing Paydirt with their Turbo Trundle, which has been sitting dark for two weeks since its arrival at Quartz Creek. Last week, then, the inventor of the Turbo Trundle installed a new motor which is able to handle the pressure. Team Hoffman fires up the Turbo Trommel and starts processing their first pay dirt of the season. Two hours into the run, Todd Hoffman decides to shut down to make sure that the Trommel is bruising gold. Todd doesn't want to process his stockpile pay dirt unless he's absolutely 100% sure that the Trommel will catch every single grain of gold. Right off the bat, they start off by finding a few decent sized nuggets. And as Todd says, that's the biggest nugget they've ever found in any of the mining seasons. At Indian River, Team Turin is beginning to see bedrock in their first dig site. Last week, Team Hoffman secured the upper bench of Indian River from Claymore owner Greg McNeil. Since it is shallow, permafrost will not flood the pit as it begins to melt in the summer sun. Over the last two months, Team Turin has moved about 75,000 yards of dirt from Cut 1 and has stock up 170 ounces of gold worth about $272,000 by themselves. Dave Turin has stockpiled the remaining dirt from cut number 1 and predicts that it takes about 12 days before he runs out of the pay dirt from the stockpile. Dave Turin fires up the D10 dozer and gets to work on clearing the overgrowth on the upper bench but quickly finds out that there's something wrong with the dozer's blade. The blade can't maintain height by itself, suggesting that it can, can't maintain pressure in the hydraulics. Dave doesn't have another dose on site because his second dose also is broken and it has been waiting on parts for 6 weeks. Without a working doser, Team Turin can't open up a dig site at Indian River. At Porcupine Creek in southeast Alaska, the fro Dakota Fred Herd is struggling to pull pay dirt out of their 70 foot hole because the 270 excavator's bucket can't break up the material. The bucket is scraping against the rock in the hole. The porcupine crew has a secret weapon though, which they call a bedrock shock. The bucket can be equipped to their 270 excavator and it has three rippers instead of teeth, which a normal bucket has. They make quick work and equip the bedrock shock quickly and Fred drives back in the hole to put it to a test. After he has shoveled out a few buckets, something breaks and the new bedrock shark is dangling from the arm of the excavator. Over at the big enough mine, Parker Snubble has to dig down 26 feet to reach what he believes is a pay streak of right, sitting right on top of the bedrock. Parker and Rick starts to excavate the overburden and Parker decides to dump the overburden at the edge of his claim. Glenn, which is Parker's fine gold expert, believes that the pay dirt Parker is dumping holds valuable gold, so he decides to run a test on it. Glenn is right, and Parker might be throwing thousands of dollars away. He shows Parker his discovery, and they almost start a fight over it. But Parker doesn't want to run the dirt through the wash plant because he thinks that it is a waste of time. Back at Quartz Creek, Todd's Turbo Trommel has been running for two days and has been chewed through a lot of material. Before the Trommel arrived, Todd spent the time on stockpiling 75,000 yards of pay dirt. Trommel processed 200 yards an hour and Jack predicts that they will be through the entire stockpile in about a week. Team Top now has to survey the land and find some new ground to mine. Ray, the Turbo Trommel designer, comes up with a place where he possibly holds a lot of gold. He suspects that there's virgin ground below the old dredge tailings on Quartz Creek. In the first half of the 20th century, dredges mined the area on Quartz Creek, but they often couldn't reach the narrow strips. On the sides of the valley, these strips are known as side pay by miners and could hold a lot of gold. To get to the virgin ground beneath the tailings, Team Todd has to remove six feet of tailings the size of a football field to get to the ground and from for that he needs a doser. At India River, both the D9 and D10 dosers are sitting still, both are broken. Mitch, the team mechanic, has been waiting for bolts so he can replace the broken idle wheel which holds the D9 doser tracks in place. 
first mist has to remove the old ball from the wheel and in the process one of the bolts break inside of the wheel. It's now a quarter of the ball still stuck inside and mid strokes with it but eventually managed to get it out. Back at Porcupine Creek, the linkage on the 270 excavator has broken into two pieces, rendering it unfixable. Fred Hurd calls in Danny, a local mechanic, to check out the damage and he states that they probably just could get a new excavator. Fred, though, comes up with a plan to make a new linkage for the excavator out of scrap metal. They load up some grizzly bars which they had laying around and heads into town where they have more tools. Back over at the Big Nugget Mine in southeast Alaska, Parker has dumped over 5,000 tons of overboard in a scramble to get down to the pay streak, which he believes is sitting right above bedrock on Emerson Trench. Glenn still believes that they are throwing away a lot of money, so he talks with the entire crew. Ultimately, Rick and Gary confront Parker with their concerns and Parker decides to stop, start running the overburden. Parker says that he wants to keep the support of both Rick and Gary since he believed that they paid, played a big part in what they've achieved this season. At Indian River, Mitch has finally putting the D9 doser back together. He successfully puts the track back onto the doser. The entire Hoffman operation has now one working doser, but both Todd and Dave needs it to open up a new dig site. Todd pulls rank on Dave and makes it clear that he needs the doser to open up the dig site before Dave. Dave doesn't seem to like that idea, which is understandable, but Todd has said, made it very clear that they need to have both wash plants running to make their 100, 1000 ounce goal. The next morning, Dave gets up early and commandeers the only dozer they have and starts working on opening up the second dig site. Todd comes to get the dozer and discovers Dave in it. Dave states that Todd does have authority but he also states that Todd isn't his boss. At Porcupine Creek, Fred is returning with the custom linkage for the 270 excavator, which he built himself. They quickly install it along with the original bucket on the excavator. He drives down the hole and tests the new custom linkage and it is rock solid. It holds together and Fred are now back on track towards glory hole goal. Only two hours in, Fred's luck runs out once again, this time is the pin holding the idle wheel on the excavator, which Fred fixed a month ago by also creating a custom one. Dustin confronts Fred, telling him that if he had listened to him and ordered a new one instead of keep fixing it, they could have avoided it completely, but Fred didn't have the money for it a month ago. Back up at Quartz Creek in the Klondike, Todd still has a problem with the doser since Dave keeps the only working one for himself. Luckily Mitch, the crew mechanic, is close to fixing the 10 D10 doser. Mitch replaces the piston inside the hydraulic system on the doser's blade and the doser is good to go. Todd wastes no time putting Andy onto clearing the tailing on Coarse Creek so they can get down to what miners call side pay at the edge of the valley. Andy plans to work through the night on clearing the tailing so he quickly can get some dirt for Todd to run through the tram. As it is chewing through the stockpile dirt at break that next speed. Back at the big knock mine, Parker's novel has been running the overburden from Emerson Trench through his wash plant for three days. If it has to pay off, they have to cover cost of six thousand dollars for fuel and labor. They need four ounces to break even on their running costs for clearing the overburden. But instead of 4 ounces, they pull out 12, which is worth almost $20,000. So the decision to run over burden paid off and cleared them 14000 in profit. Back at Quartz Creek, Andy has worked through the night and has cleared all the tailings, exposing a large field. Todd is positive that this is the ground that will get them, the, them to their 1000 ounce goal. So he calls in local driller Henley to test out the field. Meanwhile, Claim owner Greg McNeil arrives and informs them that the ground they think is side pay was dredged, and Henry's drilling resource confirms that. So there's now a huge, useless field with no gold in the ground. So that was the audible review for uh, Gold Rush Season 3, Episode 10, Dose Wars. Thanks for listening.